Hey guys, today I wanted to talk about quiet luxury handbags. Every time the seasons change, I always go through this process of, you know, kind of filling up imaginary shopping carts. I go on to all of my favorite retailers online and I fill them up with all the things I would love for the upcoming season. And of course, one of the major, major categories that you'll find in my imaginary carts is handbags. I love handbags. I have a ton of them. I was going through my handbag collection and I was realizing that at at least as of late, I haven't purchased a lot of quiet luxury handbags. It has long been a style that I have always really embraced and cherished and just always really appreciated, you know, fine fabrics and good tailoring and excellent fit, all those sorts of things. But when it comes to handbags, I feel like that's where I like to show a little bit more bling. I'll wear like an all black outfit and then I'll carry a fluorescent green beaded Fendi baguette or something like that. You know, I still will definitely do that. I like mixing things up, but I, have really come to embrace quiet luxury, at least the style of minimalist, classic sort of dressing. And so, like I said, I was kind of going through my collection realizing that I just really didn't have that much and realizing that I had some gaps in my collection in terms of this kind of classic, elegant, pared down, toned down sort of handbag. Of course, I do have a few. You guys know I love my totem T-lock shoulder bag. This is probably what has prompted a lot of this quiet luxury for me. Not only did I fall in love with Totem the brand and I bought a bunch of pieces from their line, but this bag to me just really epitomizes and symbolizes like quiet luxury to me. It's just really well made. It's really, really elegant in its design and it is very, very simple. There really isn't anything flashy to it. Every time I've worn this out, someone has asked me like, can I ask you where that bag is from? So I do know that it's eye-catching, but not in a really flashy, ostentatious way. So anyway, I have this bag, and this is kind of what has prompted me to kind of Kind of lean more into this quiet luxury look. This quiet luxury look is not one that's new to me. It is definitely one that I have appreciated for a very, very long time. So I do have, you guys are gonna laugh at how beat up this is. I do have this backpack from the row. Look at how messed up <laughs> the gold tone hardware is. It's like all tarnished. I could probably get that polished up, but I do kind of like this beat up look too. It's, it's so like the Olsen twins. So I have this bag, which is another piece that I think really epitomizes quiet luxury. I do have this other row bag that I actually have not used in a while. And I can't even remember the name of this bag. And it has this really beautiful closure at the top. So other than that, it's pretty plain except for this hardware detail here. So this is a magnet. The other side here has the other magnet. So when you fold these flaps down, they magnetize shut. So this ends up being kind of like a rectangular shape. However, these open up fairly easily and you know going in and out of my bag often I end up just kind of carrying it like this where the flaps are just up and flat up against one another and this ends up kind of showing which is pretty cool so anyway I think they probably thought of that in the design when they designed this bag this other bag is another one that I have had forever I think this bag is probably 20 is this 20 years old no no this bag is probably more like 10 or 10 or 12 years old anyway it's a Tom Ford tote and there's no big plaque or wording that this is Tom Ford. It's just on the zippers here. There are the oversized zippers when he was doing that a lot. I, I loved it for that. I loved how sleek and quiet it was. And now I feel like a lot of the Tom Ford bags have a lot of the TF or really big loud hardware, which I'm not the biggest fan of. I have purchased a Tom Ford bag recently, maybe a few years ago, the Tara bag. It just has that really sleek kind of T. That bag I really, really love. It's, it's beautiful. It's very subdued it's very understated and I wish they would come out with bags more like this you know just really classic kind of bags so anyway I would say these are probably the quietest handbags I have in my collection I have a lot of really kind of loud logoed out handbags so anyway I've come up with a wish list after creating all of these like phantom <laughs> shopping carts I have a wish list of quiet luxury handbags and I have a top five and I want you to share them with you okay so of course I will flash pictures of these bags that I'm talking about about here for you. But the first one is the Rose Sienna bag. This Sienna bag caught my eye because of this fold that it has on the sides of the bag. It looks like a little dumpling fold.
fold. It's like an inverted pleat, basically. For some reason, just this little detail caught my eye. I was like drooling over this bag. Of course, I think it's still on pre-order. I haven't seen it available yet. But the second thing that caught my eye, of course, is the color. It's like this kind of mustardy ochre color, which I really, really love. I'm a big fan of green, as you know, and this is just kind of like a little offshoot of green. I like acid colors and, and colors that are, you know, slightly unusual in this sort of green family. And oh my God, the combination of that little fold, that little inverted pleat and color really got me. Having a couple of row bags, I actually have another one that I need to pull out. I have three row bags in total and their leather is amazing. Like it just gets better with time. It just softens up. It just gets more and more buttery. The leather of this backpack is so, so buttery soft now. I mean, it started out soft, but it's just gotten better. I mean, the finish of it is like a matte now. And of course I could probably get it polished up and it would take on a bit more shine, but I really like this kind of beat up look and it's, oh, it's so nice. So anyway, I just know the leather is gonna be really fantastic. So this is high on my list. I've been going onto the Rose site, refreshing the site to see if that bag has come off of pre-order. I don't like pre-orders. How do you guys feel about pre-orders? Let me know down below in the comment section because I don't know, I always feel like, is my order gonna get lost in the system somewhere or is it gonna get forgotten and I'm at the bottom of the list instead of the top? I don't know, I don't like pre-orders. So I usually like to just go online once the item or the product is live and then just go ahead and order it. So I think I'm gonna be ordering this bag. I am also going to Italy very, very soon and I'm trying to save my pennies <laughs> to purchase something over there because of course they have the absolute best artisans ever. So I'm really, really excited to kind of dig in and see what they have over there. And maybe they'll have something like this Sienna bag with like that fold on the side. I just think it's so pretty. Okay, speaking of um, Italy, this bag I came across when I was actually shopping for Italy. Of course, I should just wait until I get there, but I'm very excited. So I was on the Brunello Cuccinelli site and I saw this shopper bag. It is just such a beautiful green. It's like a seaweed green and it's nylon, but it has the Cuccinelli beaded beadwork up the straps. And I just thought it was so beautiful. And I think nylon is so great for travel. It folds to nothing. It's super light. Most nylon is waterproof, maybe water resistant. This bag may actually be purchased before I go to Italy. I'm sure there's Brunello Cuccinelli all over Italy. So I'm trying to hold out, but I do think this would just be perfect for travels, for my travel over there. But I just, oh, isn't this green beautiful? I just love it so much. So that is number two on my list. Number three on my list is this Totem textured leather tote. And as I just showed you my T-Lock shoulder bag, I have really, really fallen in love with Totem. There's something about this tote. The look of it has a puffiness to it, but it's not puffy. There isn't a puffy aspect to it. Not like the puffy or puffer Goya bag from Loewe or any of the puffer things I've purchased from Prada. This just has a puffer quality to it. And I think it's because that seam is like sewn in a little bit and then it curves around. So it gives that sense of puffiness, but it's not really there. Anyway, it, this bag just really caught my eye and it looks like a really great, like go shopping, run errands kind of bag. And that's my favorite kind of bag. So that is definitely on the list. And then this Laura Piana bag. Now the Sessia, I think that's how you pronounce it, S-E-S-I-A, happy day bag in the size medium. I think the smaller size is too small. And then the large size almost looks like a weekender. So I like the medium size. Now I'm not a fan of suede. I have grown up and have lived most of my life in New York City and suede is just impractical. You can't wear it in any kind of weather. I mean, you can brush it out and do all those things and it'll probably end up looking fine, but it's just, to me, I've always thought of it as impractical. So I've always stayed away from suede. I also don't like the feeling on my hands that much. It, it's bothered me less and less. <laughs> Does anyone else feel that way? It has that dry feeling to it, almost like a microfiber towel. It just feels weird. Anyway, I digress. This bag, I would get this bag in suede just because there's something about the design I think really lends itself to it. I love the body of it being suede and the accents being leather. There's something about the color. Again, we're talking about a very deep, beautiful, rich green. There's something really kind of earthy and organic about it, but it also looks really, really lush and elegant all at the same time. And I find this kind of green to be very neutral 
neutral. It just goes with every color. It's nice to have like a neutral, go with everything kind of colored bag that isn't black. So something about this bag just really, really caught my eye. I love the shape of it. It's kind of like a duffel, but I really love the accents to it. It's slightly equestrian. It is really beautiful. And Laura Piana, just like Brunello Cuccinelli, you just know that the quality is gonna be there. Same with the row, all the brands that I'm talking about. Look at the lining inside this bag. It has like a wool lining, which you're talking to someone who spent a lot of time knitting. Anything that's made out of like wool or cashmere just always wins my heart. I just love it. So this bag is definitely on the list for when I go to Italy. I don't think I need it for my travels there. Definitely gonna be on the lookout for Laura Piana products <laughs> while I'm over there. And then last but not least, these two Bottega Veneta bags. I'm not gonna get both. And actually, I'm gonna see if I can put a poll up here and I want you guys to vote which one you think I should get. So the first bag that caught my eye is the Sardine Intrecciato leather bag. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but that's that woven, the woven work that Bottega does. I just love that little gold handle on top. It's like the perfect accessory. It's a handbag, but it's like a piece of jewelry too with that big kind of gold tone or brass sardine as a handle. I just think it's really cool. It's so interesting too that they made it, I guess, kind of ergonomic and in turn it looks like a sardine. I don't know which way they designed it if they were like, I want to put a sardine <laughs> into this collection somewhere and that's what they did or they designed the handle and they're like oh kind of looks like a fish so anyway I just I love the shape of it I think it looks very ergonomic it looks comfortable to hold not just like this heavy gold thing there's also another woven bag from Bottega that I love and it's a shoulder bag this bag is so much more I don't know kind of rock and roll like it looks like like a handkerchief hem at the bottom it looks all I don't it just looks really really cool you know the way I see it styled is not the way I would personally wear it. So I think I'm leaning towards the sardine, but you guys let me know. This bag, I don't know, I just kind of picture it being worn with maybe like cut off t-shirt, like cut off at the sleeves and like a denim skirt or something. I just feel like, I don't know, it has that kind of vibe for some reason. Let me know if you agree with me down below in the comment section. But it does come in this cream color. It also comes in a black. I do feel like I would get it in the black because of how I'm visualizing it. But you know, the white is so pretty because you could really see the detail of the woven leather and it's, yeah. Yeah, it's just so, so beautiful. Those are the five bags on my quiet luxury handbag wish list. The Laura Piana I'm hoping to obtain while I'm in Italy. <laughs> the Brunello Guccinelli I'll probably get for my trip to Italy. And I think between the Rose Sienna bag and the Totem textured leather tote, I'll probably get the Rose bag only because the color of that leather is so special to me. I just really, really love that mustardy ochre color. Anyway, let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Do you guys have a whole like handbag wish list, quiet, loud, whatever it is, let me know what your wish list is for this next season. But thank you guys so much for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video.